So you've heard it all before. People complain about Survive with Friends. People complain about this killer, that killer, this role, that role. And I just wanted to lay it out all on the table. I wanted to make a tier list video based on the hierarchy of Dead by Daylight. Basically, your chance of winning depending on what role you play. Now I could get into better details about that right now, but I think it would be better off if I just go ahead and start the tier list. At the bottom of the list is going to be solo survivors. If you are a solo survivor, you hate your life. Yes, you can be an insane player, you can have all the talent and skill in the world, all the palette efficiency, but like eventually you will go down in a chase. And if your team literally one at a time runs at you and lets the killer kill them, it doesn't matter how good you are, you just lost the game. You could leave the killer on a 10 minute chase, but if your teammates aren't doing gens, you lose. Solo Survivor is so dependent on your teammates that it's just infuriating. And if there was no Survive with Friends, this game would be dead because people cannot play Solo Survivor for long periods of time. It's just it's too frustrating. Not every game's terrible and it's not an insta-lost if you queue up by yourself, but you are literally the bottom of society. You're living in hell. <laughs> Anyways, in D tier, we're gonna have the majority of killers. This is anything from like mid, mid-high tier to all the way to bottom tier killers. So you know, you have your, your Trapper, you have your Plague, you have your Demogorgon, Doctor. Most of these killers are gonna fit on D tier. You know, you can still win with these killers, you can still beat really good teams, players, whoever with these killers, but in, in general you're at a huge disadvantage. A lot of these killers either can't force downs and they're dependent on survivors to make mistakes, or they have the ability to down people con semi-consistently, but they have no map pressure whatsoever. None of these killers are terrible and you should not feel bad for playing them, but if you're going against, you know, more coordinated teams or teams that know how to play around these characters' weaknesses, you're gonna have a pretty bad time. Anyways, at C tier, so basically we're gonna have survive with friends, but not full-on formans. Let's say, for example, you have a game where you have two groups of two, and they're both calming and talking with each other, or you have a game where it's like a solo and a group of three. These are going to be next up on the list. This is enough communication on its own to beat most killers consistently. Even just being able to talk to one person or being able to talk to two people, that's such a huge bonus in Dead by Daylight. It's so easy for you to say something like, hey, the solos aren't coming to pick me up, yo, can you save me? Or hey, I was working on a gen over here, can you go there? And just being able to do that with at least one other person and then having, you know, your other two teammates talk to each other, that's such a huge bonus. Next up is going to be B tier. You know, we're starting to get to the higher end of society, but B tier is going to be held by two different things. So the first thing is going to be most high tier killers. So basically killers like Blight, Oni, Hag, etc, etc, high tier killers that aren't completely unbeatable, but are very strong, effective killers. And then the second one being most four mans. So let's, I'll give some examples on specific killers and why I think they go here. I feel like Blight can put a lot of pressure on the map. I feel like he is very good at downing people, but he can't guarantee downs as effectively as better killers. Like if someone knows how to loop a Blight effectively and they're in a decent area, it's very hard for Blight to use his power effectively to down them. In a lot of situations, you have to try to cut them off in between loops, but survivors can play around that. Maybe not perfectly, but still very effectively. A, a killer like Oni, if he had his power all the time, he would literally be the best killer in the game. But the fact that you have to get that first hit to start, you know, getting blood and snowballing your power, by the time sometimes you get your power the first time, two to three gens might have popped and you might be playing really well too. And even then, your power is not completely unplayable against. Even the best Onis can't always down a survivor regardless of where they are. And on most maps, there's at least one area where even the best Onis can't guarantee a down on you consistently. People struggle against Hag because Hag is a really good player, but also because you can't just rush gens to win. A Hag's gonna immediately set up a three gen with her traps around a general area. 
And if you want to win, you want to have someone who's constantly running into the traps and blowing them up. So she never has her three gen up all the way and she never has a chance to snowball. Once again, once she gets downs and once she starts snowballing, it's almost impossible to come back, but it's not impossible to stop her from snowballing. You just have to play it differently than you do most of the killers. And that's kind of how it works for most of these really high tier killers. They're really strong, they're really effective, but they just aren't strong enough to consistently guarantee downs while having great map pressure. Regardless though, I'd say they probably fit around B tier. And the second thing is going to be most 4-man survive with friends. Now people might disagree with me here, but I will say this, the overwhelming majority of survive with friends are just friends playing the game together. They're not going into a game and then giving call outs and talking about 3 gen strats and you know giving calls every 10 seconds. And, and even when most 4-mans try to do that at times in a game, like let's say maybe they don't want to go against this killer, they want to get out the game they're still not so good that they'll win every single time. Most four mans have an advantage because of the fact that they can just say, killer's chasing me, do this gen. They can have really high synergy between their teammates, but it's not perfect and their play isn't perfect. And even when they're four really good players playing together, sometimes they're just goofing off and not taking the game seriously and not running the best perks and you can do well with these high tier killers. You know, four mans aren't the boogeyman that everyone makes them out to be, is what I'm basically trying to say. And I think if you play the other killers that I mentioned, or most high tier killers, you have a pretty good chance of beating them. So we're moving on to A tier. We're talking about the 1%, you know, the, the high end of society. And that's also going to be shared by two different groups. The first group is going to be basically nurse and spirit players. And the second group is going to be the super good tournament squad survive with friends, the boogeyman that everyone talks about. A tournament survive with friends, they, they know how to play against every killer. They know how to push every killer to the limit. They know how to maximize the effectiveness of the perks. They're all running good perks. They're all calming and giving calls and working together so well it feels different than going against most other foremans. They're all really freaking good. Watch like a gameplay highlight of Agony, which is an EU team, and they are absolutely disgusting. But even so, you'll watch it in their scrims, you'll watch it in tournaments, they'll still struggle against Nurse and Spirit. Everyone does, because it's Nurse and Spirit. When a Spirit is good at listening for people, <laughs> and a Nurse is good at downing people, that's what they do. They win pretty much every single game, Except for when they go against these tournaments survive with friends. And even then, there's a still a good chance that they're going to win. Because Nurse and Spirit are just that good. You don't even need the best add-ons with Nurse and Spirit, but when you put those on, holy crap. And obviously this goes for players that are good with Nurse and Spirit. Like, good. You know, not just like your average person who has like 20 games on them. I'm talking about the, the good Nurse and Spirit players, because they're very, very hard to play against, especially when they put on their good stuff. I think, you know, really good Nurse and Spirit players who just play Nurse and Spirit will give your tournament squads a run for their money. And they do. So at the top of the tier list, S tier, the Jeff Bezos of society, the most OP thing you can do in the game that I didn't even want to tell you guys is when a Nurse or Spirit slugs at the beginning of the game. You literally can't beat it. Doesn't matter who you are, doesn't matter how good of a team you are, doesn't matter the perks you have, you will never be able to beat a good nurse or spirit slugging at five gens. And let me explain why. Well, what are all the things that survivors have an advantage over killers with? Well, first of all, being able to avoid going down, which is something you can't do versus nurse or spirit. Even if you have iron will, even if it's, you know, Larry's or something, and you're going against Nurse, a really good Nurse or Spirit player can play around those effectively and consistently. I brought this up in a video before, but I went against the Spirit player with the most haunted downs, that's basically downs using their power, in the United States. It was impossible. I had Iron Will, I would be crouching, I would not be moving, there would be no grass around me. The Spirit could blink on top of my body 100% of the time. That's all it takes. And a nurse player who knows how to play nurse and is playing seriously is going to be able to always get you. So 
avoiding going down is out of the question. Well, you could try hiding. But here's the thing. If you're playing a nurse who's just slugging everyone, then you're going to have anywhere from two to four perks that are centered around tracking. You don't even need to take slowdown because you slugging is the slowdown. So that won't work either. This, the nurse in spirit will be able to find you consistently regardless of what perks you take. Well then what if we just rush generators? Well, if a spirit or nurse is looking from five generators, you will not be able to finish five generators before they finish slugging everyone. It's not possible. Well, what happens if we all decide to heal? Well, then no one's doing generators and eventually the spirit or nurse is going to snowball and get all of you down. Well, what happens if we run four unbreakables for we're going to live forever? It, it doesn't matter because no matter how many times you pick yourself back up, if the spirit or nurse once again is good at downing people, you're just going to go right back down. See, it's, it's truly, truly unbeatable to go against a spirit or nurse that slug at five gens. And not only that, it's just so effective because you don't have to waste any time picking up survivors, carrying them to hooks, putting them on hooks, and then you can avoid two of the most powerful meta perks in the game right now, which are Decisive Strike and Borrow Time. Because if no one's being unhooked, then those perks will never come into play. This also counters other perks like We'll Make It. And the fact that people can't just immediately go for risky saves and they have to literally be picked up or use their one-time unbreakable it just wastes so much time. There's a reason that in tournaments that the game is balanced around you getting hooks and not getting kills because otherwise everyone would just slug and not hook until everyone was down. And that would be a really boring tournament. Slugging is super OP and if you don't care about getting 12 hooks and you want to win, you should just be doing this from the very start of the game. And I promise you, if you're good with these killers and you slug and you have a bunch of tracking perks, even a team like Agony will not be able to beat you. It just won't be possible for them. It won't be possible for anyone. You are truly the highest elite of society and you should win pretty much every single one of your games if you're playing well. Regardless though, that's it. Uh, see ya.